Hi, my name is Tanisha Keza and welcome to my True Crime YouTube channel. I have been missing for the past month because I've had training at work. So I've just been focusing on that. Um, I apologize for that, but I will be uploading consistently after this weekly again. Um, I know I only have two videos out, so it's like, it's not like that big a deal. But anyway, it is raining at the moment. There's like sort of a thunderstorm happening. So I'm sorry for the sounds that you might hear in the background, but there's really absolutely nothing I can do about it. Let's get into today's case. Today we are talking about the screwdriver rapist. His name is William Frederick van der Merwe. He was born on the 11th of December in 1951 in Kew, Johannesburg. Mary, his mother, was a devout Catholic and William's father, Thomas, worked as a driver for the Johannesburg tramways. When William was just 15 months old, Thomas, his father, sadly passed away in a motorcycle accident. His mother, Mary, was pregnant and she gave birth to a baby boy just seven weeks after her husband passed away. She named this baby boy John and this was her 10th child. Her 10th child. Thomas's death left the family in a seriously difficult financial situation. They were used to money being tight, but now they were barely surviving. So Mary, she goes to the authorities and she tries to get some financial help and she did get some help from a local charity but it just wasn't enough what made things worse for william like besides being extremely poor and the whole family barely surviving was that his mother mary was giving john all this attention so his younger baby brother the newborn baby she's giving him all this love all this attention and this made william feel unloved and rejected but the only reason mary was doing this is because her son was never gonna meet her dad his dad her husband her son was never gonna feel the love of his father so she just tried to give the baby all this attention but unfortunately this just made william feel rejected when william turned two things got so bad that the family actually had to be split up william and john were seen to live in a children's home in pretoria the other four siblings were sent to a children's home in Joburg and the remaining four stayed with his mother, Mary. William is obviously, like he's two years old. I don't even really know if he understands what's going on, but now him and his brother, John, are at a children's home, no mother inside, but at least he has John. But not for long, because his older sister, she gets married. She's 16 years old. Huh? She gets married. She comes to the children's home and picks up John to come and live with them and leaves William behind. After some time, William realizes that he's been abandoned and he becomes angry and resentful. At six years old, like finally, I mean, he was dropped off when he was two, four years later. At six years old, he got to move back in with his mother. And now she had picked up the kids and moved the family to a council house in Bertrams. And William attended this junior school in Bertrams. At the school, the teachers quickly realized that William had severe learning disabilities and also really bad behavioral problems. After the principal noted that something was seriously wrong with William, he was examined by a psychiatrist. Great! They picked up that he had an IQ of 90, which is normal, completely normal, but he still couldn't read or write. This really affected him negatively and he became very aggressive and cheeky and noisy. Eventually, he is diagnosed with dyslexia. Like, okay, okay, now we know what's wrong, like now we can send him for classes so they wanted to send him for classes to a nearby clinic so that he can learn to read and write and then his self-esteem will hopefully boost and he won't feel so left out i mean if you can't read or write and your classmates can read and write then what are you doing you know what i mean so great so he's now going to these classes now they later find out that he was using the bus fee that you got to go to the clinic to go to the cinema 
So he wasn't learning to read or write. He was watching movies at the cinema and he was just seven years old. As he got older, his life seemed to go... As he got older, his life continued on a downward spiral. He was ridiculed by his classmates for not being able to read or write and he was... Um, he decided to act out by doing crime. He was like, I can't read or write, so I'm going to steal. Okay. I don't understand. I, that, that, like, what? Crime? Like, my, missing classes? Sure, because what are you doing there? But crime? Okay. At the later stage, William would admit that his first crime was theft. And he would steal or he stole his teacher's purse. In grade 3, he told his mother, I can't read. The teacher ignores me. The children laugh at me. I'm not interested. I don't want to go to school anymore. Not long after this, he started breaking into houses on a regular basis. He got caught in August of 1965 and he was charged with three cuts from a cane, which means like three lashes. So they whip him like three times and at this time corporal punishment was still legal. At just 13 years old he was a registered thief and two years later he was caught breaking into houses and then he was sent to Tukai Reformatory School. So a reformatory school, I've spoken about this before in a previous video, is a place where they send young offenders as opposed to prison because like you can't see a 13 year old to pause more, obviously. After being at the reformatory for about 18 months, he decides to run away and to go live with his sister, Flora, and her husband. They take him in and they give him a job in the carpet laying business. And for the first time in his life, he has some sort of like normalcy, like a normal life. Great. It was here that he also fell in love with a girl at church going to church falls in love with a girl he's like i've made it i've made it i got a job i got a girl sort of though kind of sort of like not really though mm, shame so she was actually pregnant and even though she was pregnant they became very close and at one stage they even lived together things were going well and then William finds out that she's seeing other guys and she doesn't take the relationship as seriously as he does. She's like, I'm seeing other people. Like, I'm just pregnant, not dead. And he flies off the handle. They get into a violent argument and the relationship comes to an end. This was too much for William. This was the final humiliation for him. A sad ending to a pathetic relationship so dramatic like i'm just saying like everybody's been cheated on before everyone has thought like something's more serious than it's not but they don't become a rapist murderer you know after this incident with this pregnant situation show his life goes on but he's angry and he's harboring anger and resentment towards the world and woman and whatever but anyway he says the first time the urge to rape came to him was when he was in vereniging He's walking down the street, this girl is walking down the street and he sees her and he's like, hmm, pretty and he tries to talk to her but she's unresponsive. So she's like, hmm, I don't have time. But this angered him and all those feelings of resentment and anger came bubbling up and without a thought, he pulls out a knife and flashes it like under her nose. She's terrified and he sees the fear in her eyes and says that he'd never known such power before. They didn't say what happened afterwards to this girl. I'm assuming this was just like his first interaction or not interaction, his first assault. His first assault, that's what it is, it's assault. Um, but I'm assuming she got away safely, otherwise I'm sure the information would have been given. But after this, he got a thrill for this. He was like, I, I'm going to keep doing this. And he started following other girls. He followed them into lifts or secluded places where he would expose himself. 
I have a sweetie about that, I'll tell it just now. Um, he would expose himself and he would suggest sexual things to them or he would actively touch them. So essentially he's sexually harassing them in secluded places. Like this is just the beginning of a harder story. So this actually happened to me. This actually happened to me. I was still in varsity many years ago and I was walking from class. So I was like in the Rondebosch area, uh, Rosebank area in Cape Town and I'm walking from class and I'm walking next to the train station like almost home and this other guy is coming on the opposite side of the road like walking this way, past, like we're walking past each other, right? And he's walking with a skateboard in front of his pants. And walking, 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 and I'm minding my business. Obviously, I'm just going home. And as we are about to like pass each other, he pulls the skateboard away. And all I see is a flaccid pink penis, a penis. And I was like, oh! Like, I didn't know what to do, and in an uncomfortable situation, I just, like, laugh or I smile, and he said something, something to the effect of, do you like it, or is it big, or something like that, and I just, like, scudded away, like, I just kept walking. Honestly, I was so shocked. I didn't even say anything, I was so shocked. He just, like, sped away on his skateboard, with his penis flopping in the wind. It was, like... I'm glad that that's actually all that happened because I was alone in that road in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day, getting surprised by something that looks like a naked mole rat. Like... Anyway, William is exposing himself to these women. But he said at first he didn't have any intention of hurting these women. He just wanted to impress them with his sense of masculinity and power. Ew. Now he's running around showing everyone his penis likely he was spotted on the street by one of his victims he's taken into custody and this is now in may 1971 he's 19 years old okay taken into police custody and he is charged with one count of attempted rape and two counts of attempted sexual assault he wasn't jailed they did not send him to prison they Put him in the custody of his sister. So, okay, the logic here was because he was dyslexic, he had low self esteem. So, instead of sending him to jail or to prison, they decided that he should go for classes to help him with his dyslexia. That way, his self esteem would improve and his urge to rape would diminish. Um, really flawed, really flawed logic. I sort of get it, but also no, not. Like, he enjoyed the control and power that he had over others. And since he'd already experienced it, this is my opinion, but since he'd already experienced the power of it, he was only going to get worse. This logic was, unfortunately, it was flawed. And soon, just like a few months after, he'd been court ordered to go to classes for dyslexia he went over the edge between september and november of 1971 william raped nine women nine women and to think he could have been in jail but anyway he raped nine women so during these three months William decided to change his weapon of choice from a knife to a screwdriver and this is what, why the media then labelled him as the screwdriver rapist. William's modus operandi, which means a particular way of doing something or a particular method of doing something a certain way, right? So his modus operandi was he would dress in white overalls and he would pose at, as an electrician. And then he shows up to a woman's home and he's like, I'm the electrician. And because they trust who they trust him saying he is who he is, they let him into the home. So there they are, locked up in their home with the screwdriver rapist. In one instance, he lured a woman into her bedroom by asking her where the plug is. Lures her in, 
rape her. In another case, he tried to rape a student. He tied her to a bed and gagged her. But she kept screaming, like she kept screaming. And he decided to hit her over the head with a wine bottle. But luckily, she didn't get knocked out. She just kept screaming and this scared him off and he ran away. He also raped a 14-year-old girl. He gagged her and he threatened her with his screwdriver. After these nine rapes, William went to confess because his sister confronted him after seeing in the newspaper that the screwdriver rapist was driving a blue combi, the same combi that William had. You go, Florida. She did it. So she was just like, you, I know it's you, go. And he went. So he confesses. Once William is in custody, he fully cooperates with the police and he is sent to Sterkfontein Mental Hospital for 28 days. So they can see if he's mentally sane and fit to stand trial. And he was. On the 28th of February 1972, William appeared in court. He was charged with five counts of rape, four counts of attempted rape, theft and crimes injuria. I know I'm not saying that right, but anyway, what that means is a willful injury to someone's dignity caused by the use of obscene or racially offensive language or gestures. He was then sentenced to death by Justice Stain. After the judge passes the sentence, William says, I knew that I was going to get the death penalty. I could see it in his face. His legal team immediately appeals the sentence and eventually he ends up getting 20 years in prison. So basically what happened, it was passed down to a bunch of judges. They didn't think that it was necessary for him to be executed and they gave him 20 years in prison. Right? One of the, the judges, Justice Holmes, said that what this youth needs is a good spell of discipline and training. Society does not require his extermination. Okay. Wrong, but okay. William is sent to prison and here he undergoes a rehabilitation program and drug therapy. And in March 1987, William is released after 15 years in prison. Now the expectation I guess of the court was that after 15 years in prison undergoing this program undergoing undergoing this therapy that he has been rehabilitated unfortunately this was not the case one afternoon at around 5 p.m on the 4th of january 1989 so two years after william's been released 29 year old christine lennon and 19 year old Teresa meisen were hitchhiking to cape town after a day that they spent at Musenberg Beach. After a while of hitchhiking, they get picked up by a man in a white bucky. And a bucky is like a truck. And who is this man? It's William. They tell him they're looking for a lift to get to Cape Town. He says, perfect, that's where I'm going. I just need to stop in Constantia to pick up some papers. They accept this offer from this William man, but they don't know it's William, but anyway. They accept this offer from the man they get in and they're on their way to Constantia. When they arrive in Constantia, they stop in front of a house and William gets out and goes to the back of the bucky. He reappears on the passenger side and the next thing the two girls know, he is pointing a gun at them. He tells them to get out of the bucky and get in the back of the bucky. He handcuffs them and he ties their feet. He tells them to do exactly as they say and if they do, they'll get out of this alive once he's finished. He then gets back in the bucky and starts driving and after about 15 minutes, he stops in a secluded area in Constantia Forest. Once they've stopped, he goes to the back and he unlocks the bucky. He says to Teresa, if you scream, I will cut off her breast in front of you. Yours too. He then took off their clothes and commented on their pretty breasts. Ugh. And then he proceeded to rape Teresa. After raping her, he gave the two girls a cigarette and promised that he wouldn't do any harm to them. Once he was finished with them, he would drop them off and they could find their way home. He just wanted to have some fun with them. He then forced the girls to get back into the bucky and then he drove to Grabo Forest which was like 40 kilometers away from this area. So I can't imagine being in the back of that bucky, tied up, helpless, 
for such a long time. William stops the Bucky, gets out, and then he proceeds to rape Christine in front of Teresa. After he'd done that, he told Christine to go into the bushes. So he forces her to go into the bushes. As they disappear into the bushes, Teresa is thinking to herself like, can I run away? How, how can I get loose? And in the back of the bucket, she's looking around, there's a box full of 29 screwdrivers. There are different exotic condoms, there's different sexual aids, and there's handcuffs, gloves, and rope, right? None of these things can help her get free. And she's looking around, looking around, and she sees that William left his pants, and he had the gun in his pants. So now she pulls the pants, and she's searching, 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 and she finds the gun. It's a pistol, the pistol, she finds the pistol. And she says, like, to herself, God, I hope there are bullets in this gun. Mind you, Teresa has never managed a gun in her life, but she manages to cock the pistol so she can prepare the gun to shoot him. And she lays and she waits and waits. And soon after that, she hears footsteps. It's coming closer and closer to the bucky. And as she hears him arrive, she rolls over and she shoots him in the head. He takes a sigh and he falls to the ground. She then manages to shoot him again in the shoulder. And then she wants to shoot him again, but the pistol jams. And she puts the gun to the side and she is terrified. She's, I can't even imagine, she's shaking, but she manages to get loose and runs to a road nearby where she stops a passing motorist. Ask him to take them to the police, take her to the police station, and he does. She gets to the police station, she tells them this whole story, and Teresa is safe. Police go to the scene of the crime, they find William laying there, and he's taken to hospital where he passed away. They also found Christine's body nearby. They found that she had been stabbed to death by William. So unfortunately, Christine didn't make it through this ordeal, but Teresa did. And that was the end of the reign of the screwdriver rapist, murdered by his own victim. So, very intense story. And I guess, like, what are my thoughts? Justice Stain was right. This man couldn't be rehabilitated. He must have seen something in him that other people the other judges weren't seeing and I don't like I don't understand I don't understand you know but he did do 15 years in jail underwent rehabilitation programs underwent drug therapy so it makes you wonder whether certain people are just beyond help like I'd like to think that people can be rehabilitated but in this case William couldn't be. Oh, yo, this, this one was just like, I mean, I know people don't hitchhike as much anymore, but this could have happened to anyone. Like you can be in Constantia far just doing a hike and someone can just decide to take you aside and to take you and take your life because you have something that they want. As a woman, as a man, as a child, and that's a very really scary thought and for me I think that the safety of the public is more important than trying to reintegrate someone back into society. Like if you are not 100% sure that this person is not going to re-offend, keep him in jail for the rest of his life if need be. I hope that Christine is resting in peace. I hope that Teresa, who is the hero of the story, she took, I, I feel bad that she had to go through that, but I'm glad that she survived the ordeal and I hope that wherever she is, she's thriving and that she found some strength in this somehow. I don't know. I think that this is a truly terrifying story and this is something that could happen to any of us. You don't have to hitchhike to get kidnapped.
you know. I hope that his victims are at peace and past what have happened to them. And I, I'm glad that he's no longer al uh, alive, around, to terrorize women. Not sorry. The story was one of those stories that have a fairly happy ending, happy ending. I mean, Christine was still murdered, but at least Teresa got to survive and this man didn't make it out and he can't hurt anyone else ever again. Well, that is the very, that is the heinous case of the screwdriver rapist. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you are interested in true crime, I would suggest subscribing because I do upload these videos weekly from this point forward. And I will see you next week. Remember, the world is your oyster. Just be safe. Just be as safe as you can. You know, let's try our best. Be safe out there. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next week. like I'm starting from scratch again because I took like a whole month break this is just like a little afterthought but I feel like I'm <laughs> like the skills that I gained in the first two videos I've lost them and this feels like my very first video again so this was very difficult for me and also it was hard talking about two women being I know in total I spoke about a lot more but this could be anyone, you know, this could be your mom, this could be your sister, this could be a child, like, this story really scares me because this is our reality as women and I guess that that's where my interest in this stems from is if anyone is likely to be a victim, it's a woman and I think I want to understand why these people do what they do to innocent people that have nothing to do with their traumas, you know? When they do these things, it's just a replacement for whatever happened in their childhood. But anyway, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be doing this again. I am actually thinking of um, studying psychology these are like afterthoughts you know you can skip it if you don't feel